Hi, this is Linda Eads. I'm going to give you an update on the RECM Global Flexible Fund. In particular, I'm going to talk about the fourth quarter of 2016, um, some of the management actions which took place in the fund and how we positioned as a result. So looking at the fourth quarter, I think that the most notable event was, of course, Donald Trump being elected the US president. That had actually quite a stimulatory effect on the US equity market. Of course, um, his ideas of, of cutting taxes and regulation and um, boosting infrastructure spending and the like uh, sort of raised expectations of interest rate hikes down the line, um, high inflation, and of course also had uh, quite a stimulatory effect on industrial metals prices. So the portfolio obviously does have quite a bit of exposure still to resource stocks um, on the industrial metal side. So counters such as Antofagasta, which is the Chilean copper producer, did very well in the fourth quarter. BHP Billiton did very well. Um, whereas actually businesses such as Impala Platinum and Anglo Platinum actually came off a bit on the fourth quarter because platinum prices were actually slightly down. It seems that the platinum price is moving more in sympathy with gold prices um, than focusing on the industrial usage of the metal. So sort of focusing more on the precious metal side than the kind of industrial usage of platinum. Um, looking at sort of other parts of the portfolio, other areas which did well were the financial sector stocks. Obviously with interest rates expecting to be hiked, that uh, was a positive for most banking stocks and the likes. Um, and sort of broadly speaking, it was another positive quarter for the fund. So the fund was up 1.8% during the fourth quarter. And if you look at the full year, that brings the total return for the fund to 24%. And so we've really seen a shift back in favor of value managers, uh, which obviously has been a long time coming, but we think that it's very early days still and that trend will continue. So looking at the positioning of the portfolio, you can see that if you add global equity and South African equity together, that equity as a whole is about 78% of the total portfolio. Uh, that's actually up in the fourth quarter and it's actually been steadily increasing over the course of the year. And as you know, we're bottom-up investors. Uh, our asset allocation is not the result of a top-down process. It really is a result of us finding new ideas and also allocating to areas uh, which have had some weakness. And um, we do have a couple of new investments in the fund, which I'll talk to. But looking at the asset allocation, you can see we do still hold some South African bonds. They are looking a little bit more attractive. We'd like to see yields above 9% to justify more of an allocation. Of course, yields did come up again in the fourth quarter, but not quite where we want them to be to actually add significantly to that portion of the portfolio. But looking at the top 10 positions in the Global Flexible Fund, you can see that it's a much more diversified and varied set of companies um, from different industries, different aspects of the market, um, than what, was, you know, what you saw in the portfolio about two years ago. Two years ago, you would have seen probably six out of 10 uh, at a minimum were resource stocks. Uh, today, you can see that that's no longer the case. In fact, you've got Impala Platinum and Anglo Platinum, which are still there. Um, but outside of that and BHP Bulletin, you can see the rest really is quite a mixed bag. And that is preferable because you do want a portfolio which has got value opportunities, but from various different parts of the market, such that they're all unlocking value at different times. So I mentioned that there were a few new investments in the RECM Global Flexible Fund during the fourth quarter. Um, that's on the local side and the global side. Just to give you a couple of examples of those, um, on the local side, we introduced clientele to the portfolio. Of course, they're the market leader in terms of direct sales of life insurance in South Africa. Um, they're a great business, uh, have been very, very profitable, and the market is seemingly a bit short-sighted about sort of difficult economic conditions and the fact that this might actually affect sales to, of course, the sort of lower income segment of the market. And that may well be the case, but that's very much a, a cyclical impact and something that one should look through when sort of determining the long-term fair value of the business. Another new investment in the fund is Ultron, the technology group, which has been through a very, very tough time over the last few years. They've seen a significant restructuring of the business, a movement away from being very much family owned and controlled to a bit more of an independent management structure. And we think that that will unlock further value um, and that the price at these levels is very attractive. On the global side, we've introduced, uh, interestingly, two very different banking stocks, uh, UK Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland. That business, of course, got into quite some difficulty during the financial crisis, had to be bailed out by the UK government. 
um, during that process and since then it's obviously also gone through a huge process of restructuring, cost cutting, having to deal with litigation expenses and uh, it's gone back to the business of really focusing on being a UK um, sort of core franchise in the UK market. So uh, we think that the price does represent value at current levels. And then uh, another banking stock, but in a very, very different area of, of the globe, which is Itau. Um, this happens to be uh, Brazil's leading uh, private bank and most profitable private bank. And uh, Itau is basically a great company which has seen its price come off as a result of the Brazilian banking cycle being at a bit of a low. It's given us the opportunity to uh, own a great company at a very attractive price. So we've allocated some capital to that. So looking at the portfolio as a whole, the Resium Global Flexible Fund uh, is a lot more diversified than it was two years ago. Uh, the market has broadened quite a bit. Their pockets of value both locally and globally in varied sectors and industries, which I think is a very good thing. Um, the portfolio does have quite a tilt towards local assets versus global, and that's because First of all, the opportunity set here has also deepened, but um, a strong swing factor with regards to a bigger local portion is the RAND, of course. Uh, the RAND is still undervalued relative to, for instance, the dollar. Of course, during the fourth quarter, the dollar actually strengthened um, a bit. So, in fact, it's more undervalued than it was previously. Um, and that does obviously mean that there's a further hurdle when you're looking at value opportunities outside of the RAND um, when you're looking at the discount to fair value. So, nonetheless, we do have a very nice diversified set of opportunities um, and it's very early on in the value cycle. We've seen this shift towards value during this past year, but if you look at the long-term cycle, of value versus growth, you can see that it's very early days. Uh, so we think that's set to continue and the ReCM Global Flexible Fund provides you with a great vehicle to actually access those value opportunities both locally and globally.